This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 208. Are you making these mistakes with your sleep? Part three, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your narrator of blogs covering health and fitness. I read to you from some of the most popular blogs out there, with author permission, of course. And if you didn't know already, there are four other podcasts where we read you blogs. So if you like the premise of this show, definitely check those out too. You can subscribe to them in the same place you're hearing this show by searching for Optimal Living Daily. I realized I'm way overdue for giving you an inspirational quote. The one that I'm gonna share with you comes from the great Thomas Edison, and I feel like it really applies, especially when we're talking about sleep and trying to change your sleep habits. So here we go. Quote, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. End quote. So as I always say, give yourselves time, have patience, Don't quit just yet, and I know changing sleep habits can be tough, but stick with it. So this whole week, I'm reading a post that's a little long. I broke it up into four episodes. I read the first part on Monday, and I'll be finishing it up tomorrow. So if you're new here, I'd recommend starting at episode 206. That's part one. But for the rest of you, let's hear part three as we optimize your life. Are you making these mistakes with your sleep? Part three by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. How to wake up better. Is there any more annoying sound in the world than the beep, beep, beep of an alarm clock? Well, maybe, but you get the point. So here you are, dreaming about riding a dragon with Daenerys Targaryen, doing improv with Liam Neeson, and playing poker with Iron Man and Spock, and that alarm clock wakes you up. You are now incredibly groggy and miserable. Here's what's happening. Remember earlier how we talked about different sleep cycles? Depending on which cycle you were woken up during, your body can struggle to move from asleep to wide awake. If you thought we were gonna make it through this section without a Katy Perry reference, you don't know me well enough. Wake up in the right phase and you can feel energized and ready to go. Wake up in the wrong phase and you will feel lethargic and sleepy. Because we're often waking up at times when we're not ready to wake up, we need to use technology to our advantage. This is why snoozing is a horrible idea. Instead of snoozing, set your alarm for 30 minutes later and skip snoozing entirely. If this is an issue for you, put your alarm across the room so you need to physically get out of bed to turn it off. I've been using the Sleep Cycle app to wake up and it's been really interesting. You simply put the time in which you wanna wake up, put your phone on your bed, and it will wake you up slowly and quietly at the best point in a 30 minute window because it also tracks your sleep incredibly accurately, it's probably the best 99 cents I ever spent on an app. Try a Dawn Simulator alarm clock. I've yet to use one, though I'll be picking one up for testing purposes, but the concept makes complete sense to me. Rather than waking yourself up in the pitch black with a disgusting beeping noise, why not gradually rise as if there was a natural sunrise in your room? Feel free to sing the first line of the Lion King's circle of life at this point. I just did in my head. Still feeling groggy? Go for a walk first thing. A mile every morning, if you can. Heck, do it while walking to Mordor. Walking outside and seeing that blue sky can trigger your body to release the hormones that encourage you to feel more awake and alive. Consider blue light therapy. Tim Ferriss swears by it, and the reviews are overwhelmingly positive, so I'll be testing one out during the winter months to see if my mornings are marked by increased energy. Am I night owl or lark? According to studies, about one in 10 people are true morning people, larks, while two in 10 are considered night owls. The rest fit somewhere in the middle as hummingbirds. What this means. Some of us are more alert at certain times of the day and naturally want to rise earlier or stay up later. Now the difference between the two extremes isn't as drastic as we've made it out to be. Humans can never be truly nocturnal. We don't have night vision yet. We're not programmed to operate during the middle of the night, but we can use our natural tendencies to help us be more efficient and productive during certain parts of the day. We can change and adapt. Just like those who successfully work a night shift job, many who consider themselves a night owl may find they can become a morning person if they set themselves up for success. I use the excuse for years of being a quote night owl to screw around all day and work from midnight to 4 a.m. each night when it really just required a shifting of my priorities and some productivity hacks. What this all means. 
identify your biological clock and try to adjust it around if possible. However, if your job requires you to get up early or stay up later, most of us can make an adjustment. Don't let your poor habits blame, quote, being a night owl like I used to. What about naps? Although generally not part of a day here in the States, we're actually programmed to desire a quick nap in the early afternoon. In other countries, naps are more socially acceptable. Siesta? Si, por favor. If you feel bad that you get tired in the early afternoon, it's not because you're lazy. It's because you're naturally wired for nap time. Now, you might still be lazy, but it's not related to your nap schedule. So behold, the power of the power nap. Fun fact, if you slept less than normal, taking a 90-minute nap the following day could lead to an increased amount of REM sleep in that nap. What about second sleep? Hear that on tomorrow's show. You just listened to part three of the post titled, Are You Making These Mistakes With Your Sleep? by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Now I'm gonna wrap up this post on tomorrow's show. Now Steve's mentioned this idea of blue light a couple of times. Many of you actually already have what's called a blue light filter setting on your phones or on your iPads or your tablets. You just have to go find it in the settings section and switch that on. Now that may help with your sleep, but we're also learning that the light coming from computer screens and tablets may be damaging your eyes. So it turns out that this light that we're exposed to, especially when it's in a really dark room from these newfangled computer screens and tablet screens may actually be over the long term damaging our vision. But the blue light filter may actually help preserve our vision. Oh, and another little plug for naps, They have studied this quite a bit actually and have found that those that take naps regularly in the afternoon, especially when I said during the hours of one and three or 4 p.m., we find that they're at a decreased risk for certain diseases, diseases like cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes. And you know what? I'm recording this at 1.22 p.m. right now. Maybe once I'm done, I'm gonna go home and take a snooze. Now, a little reminder, if you like this show, you'll definitely love the other four podcasts in our family. They're similar in that they read to you from popular blogs, but from even more topics. We'd love it if you show some support to those shows too. You can simply search for Optimal Living Daily in the same place you're hearing this podcast. That's it for today. Have a great Wednesday. We'll wrap up this post tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna go take a snooze where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.